How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another review here. Big Gold Belt Media. Myself, Damon G, and Cam, as you can see by the background behind us. Invincible Season 2, Episode 7, scheduled to drop on Prime, March 28th. This will be a spoiler-filled recap on the episode. And uh, as some people in the comments, Cam, have said, what took me so long to get on the Invincible train? For that, yeah, quite a bit. Look, <laughs> let me just let me just let y'all know this first, YouTube land, okay? My gimmick, apparently, is I jump into series that everyone would have thought I've seen by now. Yeah, that's And thing. I have a fresh take. So, there you go. Mm-hmm. So just like Tokyo Vice that you can see here on this same network and channel, where I jumped in late, I also jumped in late on this. And let me tell you, Mark's got a hell of a dating life, man, because yeah. if I had superpowers, I wouldn't even have a girlfriend. I would just be just superhero, go to school, do what I gotta do. But Mark loves, especially this season, since he's trying to make it work with Amber. They're trying, man. Yeah. They're really trying. Um, better than I could have put effort if I was a superhero. Just Let's just start there. Uh, and that's pretty much a, a big take from this episode, right? Is the mm -hmm. relationship between Amber and Mark, are they going to improve their closeness, et cetera, et cetera. But this actually starts with my least favorite character, Rex Blode escaping from the infirmary because he thinks he's about that life because he survived a bullet to the head. And he's going out to uh, single-handedly stop a tentacled monster or tentacle-faced monster mm -hmm. from breaking into a maximum security place with their own people. And he thinks he can 1v1 this person. Uh, all while using verbal quips, making commentary, as his smartassery has shown a couple of episodes I've seen. Uh, to mix success, uh, because now he thinks he's, pardon the pun, invincible, so he wants to get his mojo back. And uh, first off, I'll say this again, like I said before, his powers are whack. I don't know about throwing any kind of Bunsen beakers at people, you know, right. throwing beakers at people, <laughs> like your fake gambit, but hey, that's a different review. So he, our boy Rex trying to prove himself, trying to, I got this, but he don't got it. So he makes a call to Eve, but Adam is busy. So Mark, even though he's trying to be on a date with Amber of all places, Comic-Con, where we get a, a, a bird's eye view on how animation really works. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I did get too. to see how you could save money on animation. So if you're all complaining about when season three gonna come out, there's some corners they can cut, but- There you go. Mark leaves Amber there goes to rescue uh, Rex Blode, and then shenanigans ensues. Rex has an ego about it, saying, I got this, and uh, tells Mark to go handle uh, the flotsam and jetsam of the rest of the group while he battles the tentacle monster who, to the tentacle monster's credit, try to learn the English language. Yeah. And uh, Rex does not like aliens, illegal or otherwise, because he's making fun of the fact that this alien had tried to learn English. Yeah. So it's not easy, man, if you're not from this world, Rex, okay? just saying but cam what do you think so far about like let's say the first 10 minutes of the episode with mark and his dating life leaving her at comic-con and then rex trying to be the lone soldier uh, well just to go back to mark mark has his priorities all jacked up i feel like i mean i understand he's young he's ambitious he's trying to make this relationship work but dude there's other things going on we gotta save the world you know like i mean <laughs> He's he they obviously don't have a Spider-Man in their universe because with great power comes great responsibility. But Mark is kind of like the exception at this point because he's still kind of like he's he's honestly a teenager, to be yes. honest with you. You know, like he hasn't even hit his 20s yet. He's still in college, um, trying to live a normal life, but sooner or later he'll probably have to figure out that there's nothing normal about him. So nope. kind of hard to, to live that life in this sense. Um and then Rexplosion, which powers do suck, I, I agree with you. Um, it's basically like he's throwing those little like uh, those Flasks. little like necklaces, yeah, those necklaces mm -hmm. that you have during Fourth of July and you break them open and they like <laughs> oh, the glow, glow sticks, the glow sticks. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing glow sticks at people that explode. Um, but he he 
he's he's so witty and charismatic but also an ass as well because he yeah. made fun of the alien for trying to like, to learn the english language like you said he's like i is this really english you're stupid and i'm like oh man well he's not the most intelligent guy himself you know to be no, he's not making comments about people like he's that. got now, he's got balls on that one yeah yeah and now he's developed this complex where he thinks he essentially is invincible after that shot to the head from last episode so the episode is going in a crazy direction within like the first 10 minutes like you said and oh, yeah. it just gets even crazier yeah didn't he have, didn't our boy rex have like a spider-man hand motion and a hand cannon he didn't have a hand. Out of his wrist yes I mean that's I mean that's the only way for him to de have defeated that guy to be honest with you because he was getting he was getting cooked the whole entire time. Yeah, he was getting cooked. Yeah. Um, but that's him. <laughs> yeah, that's him. I mean that, that. Thank God for that hand. Maybe I mean maybe he needs yeah. two hands and then that'll be his thing. That's a wreck explosion is what he'll we'll call yeah. it at this point. But crazy, crazy man. He's still in the game after all that. Yeah, and you would think that because of everything he's gone through, he would, you know, take a take a step back. But alas, yeah. we were not we were not left with Rex doing that uh, no. with help from a little help from Invincible. He's able to overcome the odds with his new arm cannon, or as I said here, like to oh to Mega Man Buster Cannon, uh, you know, the Mega Buster. Right. But then we switch a little bit to uh, the nightmare scene of Da Sinclair you know doing his and we'll talk about him a little bit later but like the experiments you know rick and and rick's boyfriend and the whole trying to recover from the trauma then we got donald being brought in because we find out that donald has died 39 times <laughs> and trauma man crazy exactly and cecil tells him hey you're the reason why you don't have memories you told right. us to do this right because that was too much trauma for one brain to hack being able to die 39 times and not be able to do your job. That was the logic that Donald used, you know, for erasing the memories to get Colson was, hey, right. I won't be able to do my job if I have all this trauma, which uh, as a therapist, I completely understand. Uh, yeah. uh, but but Donald, he's coming to the grips of. I think he said he's 98% machine in this episode and mm -hmm. only 2% human, but that 2% like milk is uh, the stuff that keeps him going to difference in the world. So wh what are you thinking about Robo Donald and, you know, all the upgrades? Well, I think at this point, I mean, since he is majority machine, he's probably just lost trying to really find his own self, you know? Uh, where he fits in right. at this point i mean we know what his job is i mean he probably won't stop doing his job i mean he's not gonna like go off and be like all right i'm gonna go into retirement that's the last time i don't want to die 40 times you know yeah. he's going to continue to keep doing the same thing because obviously that's all he's known and if you think about it it seems like he's kind of programmed that way not in a mechanical sense but just in a mental sense, that's why he's programmed mm -hmm. is to be that guy, right? The guy that gets sacrificed, the guy that lays his body on the line for everyone else. So in a sense, I mean, he's able to relate to a lot of characters, just like you said, what uh, William's boyfriend, William. Rick, mm -hmm. able to, to, to relate to him, right? And just how, or just the trauma he's been through with D.A. Sinclair, right? Who's right. a terrible person that now we find out is actually working for Cecil um that that is we, it's, it's kind of crazy that caught us off guard when we saw that because even i said wait a minute i thought he was gone and then he right told me yeah that, so did I. well they need the army right like here we go here we go apparently da sinclair is still here because he's got to make some some army some new repl replicants i guess for uh yep. for cecil and, and company but rick going through ptsd realizing there's a piece of him missing, mm -hmm. right? And as you said, that helps him, that helps Donald and, and also to get a kind of a better view of himself. Yeah. Where to help Rick formulate this whole, okay, how, what am I going to do now that my life has been kind of taken from me? Cause I right. died. But as they both said, I was rebuilt and now I don't know what to do. What part of me is real. Right. And Donald tells Rick, hey, the stuff that makes you you is how you act and how you you treat those around you and the people who right. love you. The, 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 all the hallmarks, hallmark special. 
Right, uh, exactly. You know, and I thought that was, like I said, it was very Hallmark Channel-ish, but it makes sense. You know, if you're in the hero business or even the human business, like as you and I are, we try to do our best, right? And then we hold mm -hmm. on to those good things that we've done that kind of get us through the day. And I think that's what uh, I was trying to get across. Um, I think that got across to both of them, to be quite honest, um, you know, De uh, Donald and Rick, just because who comes back from dying, right? And it's being colsoned and you don't know what to do. So yeah. maybe they can find some catharsis, you know, at the end of the season or going forward where they accept their lot and they make the best of this new, this new situation. Uh, and speaking of people who are trying to make the best of a situation, Debbie's still working. While Oliver is being babysat, and uh, Debbie got asked out. She yeah. uh, she she had a, a gentleman caller, her coworker, mm -hmm. ask her out to dinner uh, because, as we called it, oh, he's got he's got feelings for Debbie. Oh, for sure. And and we thought, at least I thought, that Debbie would have a little bit of reservation because maybe she still has some feelings for Nolan. Maybe it's too soon. You know, I, I got to worry about Oliver, but she does it. Ends up agreeing to the date and saying, hey, I'll see you Thursday. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead, Debbie. You get, Speaking of balancing work life, right? You have this, this, this stepchild who you're helping to raise. You have right. your son who is struggling in college, who just happens to be a superhero. And you're one of the best real estate agents in the entire county. So I think Mark could take a lesson from his mom in trying to yeah. balance everything and yeah, keep your head on. She's killing it. She's killing it. Like, shoo, goodness gracious. I want to be able to handle it. So we find out Mark is also struggling with his grades, right? And the whole, mm -hmm. we talked about last episode. <laughs> oh, well, you know, he's just been gone and family business and et cetera, et cetera, and family matters and all what have you. And speaking of family matters, we find out that the dean <laughs> great, great little punch of his there. school <laughs> is Dean Winslow, voiced by Carl Winslow of Family Good Matters, Reginald Bell Johnson. Right. Mm -hmm. And you and I watched the episode back twice, and we forgot that. It surprised me twice, right? And I was like, was like whoa, Carl Winslow? Like, I forgot. Yeah, that. so I thought that was a cool little cameo, you know, yeah. about, all right, hey, we got Carl in here, and he sounds yeah. just like he did back and he was yelling at Steve Urkel, but he lets Mark know, hey, I don't believe you really want to dedicate yourself, but I'm going to give you a month to figure it out. So mm. in typical TV sitcom dad, giving him a chance to prove his worth yeah. and keeping him in school. So shout out to Reginald Bell Johnson for even though Family Matters is over, we all still know we don't mess with Carl Winslow because, yeah. you know, TV dads. Yeah. And he's not... As far as I know, he's not very problematic. No, um, no. After everything, you know, he's like the late James Avery. You know, when you find right. out things that that they were good human beings, you're thinking, all right. And cool. to throw this in there, he actually was a uh, Mark's principal at his high school. Yes, he was. Before this, so like, um, for those of you out there that didn't see uh, season one, then yeah, he was he was a principal. And now he's the dean, um, which is crazy that little transition. But lucky for Mark, right? I mean right what a luck of the draw at this point you know it's plot armor right we have the we main have, character yeah. with a whole bunch of plot armor uh i mean he's invincible so he does have yeah, that's armor. true why not <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> might as well give him plot armor on top of that so we're celebrating right mark's got the second chance him and amber are gonna make it work the guardians and cecil made a deal with him to give him a night off to go out with amber Mm -hmm. to make up for the comic-con debacle so they're over here having the romantic you know miles morales gwen stacy you know kind of like spider-verse date you know or, or just flying her around the city and just this romantic superman lois lane kind of what have you and they stop at a coffee shop and they're talking about school and they're talking about how does one balance being a superhero you know while still having a relationship and mm -hmm. can we do this can we go on a trip until somebody shows up to ruin it. And it ain't Cecil. It's not his dad. But it's another Viltramite. And you told me about this person. Uh, yeah. And it's Anissa. Who uh -huh. is a, a female Viltramite who just shows up. 
No one realized she was there at this coffee shop. She just popped up out of nowhere and all the patrons are over there sipping their coffee and their tea. And she basically tells Mark, yo, we ought to talk. And mm -hmm. he goes, I'm sorry, who are you? So he puts her hand on Amber's neck. Now, if you've watched a lot of superheroes who are trying to date, like Spider-Man, Superman and the like, the damsel in distress trope is played up here really well. And right. She's based, and this is basically saying, Hey, I just want to talk to you. Now, if you don't talk to me, I'm about to snap her neck. Yeah. And Amber is visibly, visibly upset and shaken by this. And Mark tries to remain calm, says, Hey, don't hurt her if you leave her alone, or don't hurt else, anybody else in here because he's thinking, Hey, it's a Viltramite. Yeah. I got to be ready for war, and I don't want to hurt these civilians. So if you leave him alone, I'll meet you in space. So what happens? She agrees. She goes up to space. I don't know how much time el elapses. Marcos gets his uniform, puts his ears piece in, calls Cecil, and then we're cutting uh, to space. So, but this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is this in this's first appearance on yeah. the show? This is her, her first appearance from what, what I remember. Okay, yeah. so what yeah. did you think of her first appearance? I was surprised that it was so early. Mm. um and a lot of people that know the comic uh, i believe she appears a little bit later on but i think a lot of people know what this is really after at the end of the day as well so um right. it's it's a surprise for me to see this character in here and it's actually exciting because it just means that the the story of invincible is slowly going to start evolving into something a lot bigger um but yeah it was it, honestly i when i was surprised at seeing her I was more fearful for Amber's life because I was like, yes. I was like, oh, she's done. Like, this is, this is it. It's over for her. Um, but I mean, even saying that, you know, she was let go and then Mark got to let her go home and, you know, go up to space. Amber's never going to recover from this, bro. No, like, that's PTSD right there, man. Shook mm -hmm. beyond shook because now she realizes that it's not only mark's life she got to worry about she got to fear for her own and she ain't she don't have the same healing powers or same invincibility as mark she is just a person just a regular human being and at any moment like that as we see on this show anybody could be taken out right and and it's funny because as i'm watching her just be pent up and obviously scared and fearful for whatever reason if you've played spider-man 2 right mm -hmm. And spoilers for if you haven't played Spider-Man 2. But it reminded me when you were talking about, yeah, this isn't Mary Jane with the stun gun, right? All of a sudden right. you have oh, the no. miraculous no. powers of the stun gun and you can beat a symbiote. It's, this right. is a human woman with a superpowered being around her neck. Mm -hmm. And at any moment could kill her right then and there. And Mark couldn't save her because even yeah. Anissa tells her, this time it takes for you to get across this table, I would have snapped her neck. So, yep. well, and we'll get to Amber's after the fact, but Mark goes up into space, apparently to, to just talk and say, hey, what do you what do you want? And Anissa basically says, well, we've been talking about, hey, it's like, like Vegeta and Goku, you need to take over this planet. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, you need to embrace your heritage. Right. Uh, so what you going to do? And he goes, hey, I, that's not what I want to do here. But Cecil's in his ear saying, keep her talking. Because there's only an 18% chance you can beat her. Yeah, at your low, current very low. Stature. Uh, so to keep her talking, to say, okay, listen, if you're promising not to hurt humans and you want to make life better for humans, because that's her, that's her sales pitch, is to say, we don't want to kill humans. We want right. to make their lives better. We want, even though they'll be under our rule, they'll still be under our protection. We can make their lives infinitely easier because you guys are stupid, essentially, is what she's saying. Like, your leaders are greedy. You're mining the planet, like hashtag duh. And you guys are going <laughs> to are gonna kill the planet in a couple of years if you don't right. let us take over. Sounded very Thanagarian, if you ask me, Justice yeah. League. But uh, so Mark, in his, I guess in his mark way gets an ear but gets an earpiece buzz from cecil talking about hey there's a kaiju <laughs> about to eat a uh, a cruise liner y you might want to go over there and like nip this in the bud so he tells her hey and he's, look, 
if you're really serious about not hurting humans, let me go do this and you could just watch so I could save some humans. Right. And Anissa, for whatever reason, goes and says, I want to see the son of the great Nolan in action. So you saw it. Yeah. What What did you think was going to happen when the kaiju stuff happened? And, and describe for the audience what actually happened and if you were surprised by it. So I actually thought that Mark was going to go. He was going to put on such a great performance and mm -hmm. destroy this kaiju. And Anissa was going to be like, okay, pretty good. Now what happened at all? Um, <laughs> Mark gave his best effort. And as always, he got his, he got his ass whooped. And then I next thing up. you know, here goes Anissa, right? Anissa got to step in as, as, as I mean, I would expect it because she is full 100% Vilch, right? And instantly takes this thing out, man, which is which I thought was so crazy. Like literally, she put no effort into it, zero at all. Did you did you think that she would? Did you think the same thing, or did you think it was going to be? I didn't think she'd get involved. I thought the themes already with Invincible, I've noticed, is that this is Mark's thing. It, he's right. basically a Saiyan. He's going to get his butt stomped at first, yep. and then he's going <laughs> to rally, come back. And again, that's another Dragon Ball reference. So shout out uh, to Akira Toriyama. But what I've noticed is Mark takes a licking but keeps on ticket. So I mm -hmm. thought he was going to rally, drop this kaiju with a little bit of effort. But the again, to quote Dragon Ball, power levels here between yeah. Anissa and him were completely uneven because she didn't even bat an eyelash on this thing. Right. Destroys it, kills it, saves the humans. Cool. So Anissa goes, hey, we did it, but you could use more training. So what do you say? And Mark says, no, I'm not doing it. And typical Mark saying he ain't going to do it. Anissa hits him once. And that was enough to shatter his, <laughs> his, eye, his eyeballs, his yeah. eye visor. And he, she gave him an uppercut, knocked him up in space or in, in the upper atmosphere. And he got hemmed up in two punches. Mm -hmm. And the power disparity is quite evident to yeah. the point where Cecil's like, dude, just admit you'll take the world over and we can come up with a plan. Just relent. And she's again telling him, I'm not trying to hurt you, man. I just want you to see what your mission is. Yeah. Mark being Mark. Nope. Getting his ass beat. Nope. Trying again. Nope. Getting his ass beat. Again, this dude thinks he's Vegeta or Goku. Yeah, and it's, dude, you need to knock this off. And to the yeah. point where even Cecil's telling him in his ear, dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> right, right. Just all you got to do is say, all right, I'll give it a shot. Right. Just to it, throw her off the scent. Yeah. And it's not even like he really has to do it. He could just, just yeah. lie to her to get off of your back. And he's just like, I don't want to no. be that guy. Well, you can be the dead guy. You keep playing around, man. Like, what is going on? It's crazy. She put him in a crater. Like mm -hmm. his dad did in season one. She yep. put him in a crater yep. and she has her foot on his throat. And he calls her bluff and saying, you need me alive. Well, he's choking it out. Right. You need me alive as he's spitting up blood again. <laughs> and, and and by the way, Rex Blood makes a joke about him regrowing teeth, which I thought was hilarious. Right. That yeah. That is Invincible true. has a way to regrow, regrow his teeth. So she's stepping on his throat. And then we have the, the, the trepidation issue, won't we? Won't she? And then she relents and she goes, all right, I tried to handle this with diplomacy. We tried it your way. Somebody else is going to come. That's not going to be as gentle as me. So we warning you. I warned you. And she takes off. Mm -hmm. Mark in that crater, all jacked up. Thought he was going to go unconscious. Then all of a sudden he... <laughs> And he's and he snaps his neck back to place apparently and spits out some blood, and he's good. Just he's good. He just heals and he's and he's telling Cecil, so, uh, you know, we got we got this. Even though his eyes all swollen, yeah, he feels like Rocky. He won the fight. No. And then we get to the sad part of the episode. If you thought all this was sad, then we get to the sad part of the episode, where Mark goes to go check on Amber. As you said, Amber is quite shaken up and taken aback by the events that have happened. He goes back to her all beaten up. 
has an ice pack or some peas on his face. He's back in the civilian clothes. And then uh, they have the talk. And if you've been in enough long-term relationships, oh yeah, if you need to have the talk, yeah, that's it, buddy. <laughs> it, that's a wrap for you. Yeah, that's and, it. Yeah. Uh, turns out they broke up mm -hmm. because, as you said, Cam, she doesn't know how to. Amber does not know how to operate in Mark's world now that she's gotten a firsthand taste of a supervillain can right. come and mess you up to get back in Mark. The, the mm -hmm. typical hero stereotype, you know, protect your loved ones, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, she's still visibly shaken. Mark at first seems confused by this. Like, hey, it's par for the course. But she tells right. him in a monologue, I'm not you. I have no powers. It's just me. So I can't walk in your world. Right. And then Mark thinks about it. And then she's crying. And then he starts to cry and then they have this emotional what are we going to do and it's assumed that they broke up it's right. pretty safe to assume that they broke up because they had the talk right uh, so mark ain't feeling that great about his life potentially him and amber break up amber's got some ptsd to deal with mark has to go home lick his wounds you knowing things of that nature or he gets a call from his mom. He's like, great. Now I got to talk to mom and tell him me and Amber broke up. And then he picks, he picks up the phone and then he gets a phone call asking him, when are you coming home? And it's not mom. It's not Oliver. It's Angstrom. Mr. Big old lumpy head with uh, putting on his, you know, his, his proper suit. Yep. He's holding them hostage. And that's where the episode ends. Uh, and then we get a stinger of Anissa going back to the Viltrumite ship, feeling her mission, giving her status report, and of all people, flying through space, Alan. <laughs> just do you. <laughs> Jack. Alan just Alaning, just do, <laughs> looking swole. Like, mm -hmm. he was on three cycles. And him and Anissa have a brief fight in space. He mouths off to her. He took off a full-fledged punch to the jaw, talking about you can't hit for shit, and he bloodies her in space. So yeah. Mark, if, if you if you think Mark had a chance, he had zero chance. Alan, at the very least, landed a blow, made her bleed, and then allows himself to get captured. And that's where the episode ends, where Alan's getting captured and being brought onto the ship. So from Hangstrom to Alan being captured. Let's bookend this. What was the last stanza of, of the episode? What were your thoughts? Um, I thought it was a good end because it feels like it's going to tail into something bigger or something we've been waiting for for this whole entire season. Um, obviously, I mean, Alan at some point in his mind has some type of plan in, as to why to get captured. And I think him realizing that, you know what, I'm not the same Alan I was before. If anyone knows what that means, I'm a lot stronger and I can might be able to handle a couple of these Viltrumites if I take them on at this point. So that's um that's kind of cool to see because we saw him in the first part um, of uh, I believe it was season two, part one, so, where he was getting yeah. killed. So it kind of makes you kind of have hope for Mark at the end of the day as well. You know, it's like, okay, well, if this can happen to Alan. I mean, Mark's body might not change or get that big, but he might be able to increase his power levels and my god the dragon ball z references just keep on coming right yes, just, just keep on coming give him sensu bean at this point like what, <laughs> what what is next um but no i think i think it was a good way to end this episode um but for me in my opinion i think that that ship has sailed with the amber and mark relationship i feel like mm. it's it it came to a close i think it needed to come to a close because at the end of the day, I don't think anybody wants to be in a relationship and feel utterly helpless like Amber did. Right. So, yeah. So one of the lessons I've took from this episode is if you don't have superpowers, don't date a superhero. Yeah, not a good idea. Just, just good stick idea. to dating regular folk. Uh, right. And so what would you give this grade? Because I can tell you right now, it wasn't the greatest episode, mm -hmm. uh, but it did, like you said, it set the table 
for future episodes or, or down the road in this season. So the next episode specifically, uh, I'm giving it out of five. It's a three, three out of five. Yeah. Yeah, I give it. A, I give it a three point five. All right, somewhere you in the always like, give the half extra. Always there. the point fives. Got to throw it in there in that little extra <laughs> marker dash. So three and a half from you, three from me. Let yeah. us know in the comments down below. This was Invincible, season two, episode seven, scheduled to be released on Prime, March twenty eighth. Let us know. Are we on point with our review down below? What do you think, Mark and Hankstrom are going to get into? in episode i believe episode eight uh and what's next for mark in his dating life find out next time on the episode <laughs> the next episode of invincible but before we go if you want more commentary like this more reviews more just series talked about discussed like us and tokyo vice for instance go to biggoldbelt.com biggoldbeltmedia.com and uh, basically you have your one-stop shop for all your nerd podcasting needs reviews films wrestling a little bit of sports here and there but uh big find us all your social media platforms and the like and let us know in the comments below like like share subscribe all that good stuff what'd you think of the episode i say three cam says three and a half let's have the conversation and again folks i'm the guy that jumps in late please forgive me we'll catch you next time